My name is Chris Liebing. I'm a DJ and I'm currently based in Switzerland in a little sweet village called Bruson. The music I'm producing I would consider as techno when it comes to the DJ music, I would say. It's pretty raw, stripped down techno. Some of the stuff that I've recently produced, I would almost argue you could also produce in the 90s. So it's, it's, it's in a way a little timeless, but obviously I'm using the latest technology to do it, so it's sounding more modern. But I'm always drawn to a, a certain kind of like raw, stripped down vibe of techno. You kind of had these images in your head of the club and you were, while you were playing and I could envision myself standing in that club and trying to play something and getting this out of my head into onto the mixing desk into uh, turning it into a production was probably the biggest source of inspiration. By now, uh, sitting here in the nature, currently here in Switzerland, I have learned that even going up on the mountains and just being in nature is extremely inspiring to produce actually techno music. And I'm a very strong believer that I can only excite other people on the dance floor if I'm excited about what I'm doing myself. And that's the great thing about techno music or electronic music in general. It's like, it just keeps evolving, it just keeps going. And it, the technology side of it is also a very important side because it's techno as well. So it's part of the word even. And it brings a lot of new ideas every time something new comes in, even just a plug-in and you just have new ideas and you go on and it seems to never end. And I think that's the greatest thing about this, that you can still do it. My new album, which is called Another Day and is going to come out in November on Mute Records, I've been working on this for the past two years, uh, also with my co-producer Ralf Hildenbeutel. But this album, uh, I mean, I've already got a lot of help of Mute Records and especially Daniel Miller on my first album, uh, with, which was Burn Slow. Um, but with this album, Daniel actually took over the role as an executive producer. And he was also helping a lot in, in the mixing process, which I've learned so much. There's a lot of uh, examples where technology really, really helps the creative process these days. Obviously, I only found out later that about, I don't know, 80 to 90% of all my favorite tracks in the 80s were uh, released on one label, which was Mute Records, that was so highly responsible for connecting various synapses in my growing brain which is ingrained in my brain. It's a sound aesthetic that is ingrained in my brain. Well, I was aware of Chris back in those Nova Mute days in the uh, early, early 90s. Really liked his work. But around that, a little bit after that, I started DJing again, basically techno. So I was searching around for a lot of music, as, you, as, as one does. And I found, in a similar way to how Chris regarded realized about a lot of his track favorite tracks were on mute i realized a lot of the tracks that i really loved were on clr and chris's work as well uh, obviously and so when i am um, i decided to start up nova mute again my first port of call for advice or guidance whatever you want to call it was was chris and chris was very generous with his advice and sending me loads of tracks and um, Chris became a kind of a A and R man for Nova Mute. Kind of a very natural process. Being able to kind of give a little bit of advice was was an amazing way for me to like give back a little bit of what you've created uh, musically for, for not my only myself for, for the whole world in, in, in those uh, by, by creating a label like Mute obviously. And our relationship just was always there and it was always great and I've, I've loved every piece of advice you've ever given at any dinner. And at some point in 2015 or 2014 it was like that uh, I felt that I wanted to make an album which was more musical in a way. I was a little bit more involved in the production of it. Yeah. There were a lot of tracks already well in, in progress. And I came to visit you and Ralph in the studio in Frankfurt. This was before lockdown, obviously. I brought my traveling modular case with me just to try a few sounds and a few overdubs and just to mess around. That's what we did. It was yeah. extremely productive on each, one of, on each one of these tracks, which made each track a little bit more, like it gave it the edge it really needed 
for this album now, you, you, your involvement was uh, in, absolutely incredible uh, as you took a way more hands-on approach, not only by coming to the studio with your modular setup and, and adding uh, the missing pieces, like let's, let's mix this down and we, uh, we mixed it down and this is a great thing about technology these days. It's, it's a very fluid process. Like the whole production process of the whole album was very organic, yeah. especially with this album. This album would not exist if it was if if you weren't if, if you weren't there. Well, one thing's for sure: it wouldn't exist if you weren't there. 